think I sing at the core because, because I love it. I love the intersection of music that for me draws out an emotional response. The voice as an instrument is not something we get to put away at the end of the day. It's, it's so interconnected with who we are, with how, we, how we're feeling about ourselves, about what it is we're expressing. There's not really a way to describe the feeling of being in a room with 60 people and singing the same thing and doing the harmonies and like layering the music in, in that way. And there's like this like gut feeling you have when you're singing in a choir that's really special. And when I come into the choir room and when we start singing, it's like that nothing else matters. It's, it's my time to like be with the people in choir and with the music that we're singing. And that's an experience that you really just don't get anywhere else. There's just like such a camaraderie that comes with singing with people. It's such like a, um, like a shared feeling, a shared project. And it's something that's typically so either like stress relieving or like free flowing compared to a lot of other things in life in college when life is stressful and college is stressful. I think part of it is just kind of being part of, you know, a big musical family where all our voices just kind of blend together to make beautiful music. We, we carry each other up, we lift each other up, we cheer each other on. But at the same time, it's just kind of also mentoring the new additions to our choir, which just keeps on growing every single year. I think for me, it goes back to community, but it's also that personal spiritual connection. Um, and for me, this is the one thing that I'm doing for me. Uh, I mentioned that I have a little guy at home, he's 16 months and he is the light of my life and uh, my husband and I adore him but he takes up every waking moment that is not at uh, work and so this is the 90 minutes that I have for me to invest in my own personal development um, and maybe give to a community in a different way. As human beings, I think we sing sort of like why I came to choir at this point. I think it's a healing force. I think as human beings, we have a need to tell our stories. And music is uniquely suited to doing that because it's not just language, it's also then rhythm and sound and vibration. And I think that it allows our stories to be told in a way that people can hear differently. So I think, especially now in this time in the world, I think that we need that kind of healing space. Singing is a way of bringing not just healing to my life, but also as a way, it's always been my place of service. Art is my place of service. Whether it's been acting or singing or teaching or directing or anything like that, it's always been my place of service and for me, Singing is a way to give something to an audience that maybe they didn't even know that they needed. It's a connection to the music, a connection to the sensation of how good it feels to sing in a group. The community that, that you gain by coming in and it being vulnerable, of making mistakes together, improving things together, and then moving into a situation where you get to present that to an audience and hopefully have them connect with the message that you're trying to communicate. So we're not just telling our own stories, but in choir, we tell other people's stories. And then we hope that that sort of musical medium helps an audience connect emotionally with those other stories. And it's really important all the time, but especially in times where people are very divided and very focused on the individual. A kind of collective experience like choir where we really do depend on one another each day is, it's kind of, it's kind of radical, I think. So here at SU we've got 
three choirs that you can join. And I would say that if you've never sung in choir, the best thing to do is reach out to me and come visit a rehearsal. Our rehearsals are open, which means that you're welcome to visit us, come sit in a section, sing or not sing along, but kind of follow along with the process and get, um, get that experience of how does this feel? Is this a place where I, I could see myself growing and, um, and feeling comfortable? So our rehearsals have a lot of elements to them. Um, at the top of rehearsal, if you come to one, you'll probably see us doing some kind of physical warm up at the beginning. Part of that is to sort of reorient the body. You know, people walk around with all kinds of posture these days. Um, and in particular, a lot of bending down <laughs> toward our, our phones and our devices. But a lot of what we're doing at the top of rehearsal is reconnecting folks with their breath, reconnecting people with a sensation of a free and tall posture. That's, that's how we open it up. And then you probably heard of vocal warm-ups. That's, that's a big part of the beginning of, um, of a rehearsal as well, because we're sort of, we're asking our voices to do more than they usually do moving through a typical day. So beyond just like ordering coffee and talking in class and speaking to your friends or th those kinds of things, we're asking our voices to move in ways that we're not accustomed to potentially, to, um, to extend our breath for long phrases. Um, so we're building kind of respiratory ability and then oftentimes we're working on extending the range. So that's how high and how low you can sing. And over time, through exercises, we know that we have the ability to grow that range. And so that those are things that we're doing at the beginning of the rehearsal and then, you know, continuing to use throughout the rehearsal. Choir has been definitely the most consistent thing about my experience at SU. It's been the one thing that I've done every single quarter and that has been so important to me. Having that stability in life and having something that you always can go back to is so important for, has been so important for my emotional and mental health. I mean, we're in college, it's a tough time. We're experiencing a lot of, of changes and really tough things, frankly. and choir has always been a spot that even if I'm not in the best state of mind, I'm coming here and sharing in that in that special experience and making music together and kind of looking past whatever is happening, even on the days when it seems like that's all I could think about, to come in here and to like have that with me as I'm singing with other people is has been really influential. I was an actor for over 25 years and then um, had a car accident, went back to school, got my master's in psychology and a master's in social work, started working in that capacity, and then seven years ago was diagnosed with cancer. So that took me out of the workforce because my body won't let me do the nine to five thing anymore. I heard about University Singers through the alumni letter, and I thought, that's a way that I can remind myself of who I am in the world again, to sing again, to be part of um, a collaborative group creating music and creating art again. And I also honestly was looking for healing for my life. And music does that in a way that kind of nothing else that I can think of does. Art does that, right? I think art globally overall is um, one of the most creatively healing forces we have on the planet. So I was at a place in my life where I just had to stop and look at what I could do to regain a sense of who I am in the world. And here was this amazing opportunity to sing with other people again. So there we go. That's what I am doing. <laughs> Music is not 
It's not just about, it's not simply sacred music. It's not simply pop music. It's, it has a lot of depth and breadth that I think we can tap into. And I think it's a privilege of mine to be able to have the ability to think about these things and to find out how we can go deep with our artistry. Our April concert this year is a concert about love and loss, um, really universal themes. But this March concert um, addresses this, this issue of martyrs and gets heavy in a, a place that I think is important that we go um, as artists. In May, we're going to be doing a concert called Only All of Us, which is addressing this immigration conversation that's going on nationally. My hope is that through our performances, people will leave with a sense of renewal, and then hopefully some questions, some interest in dialogue, like what are the next steps? What did that make me think of? So that we can hook them with some ideas. We're not necessarily trying to say, this is where we all stand on any particular issue, but we are trying to sort of contribute to the conversation. And one of the things I think is really valuable is we're trying to amplify voices that perhaps might not otherwise get heard. These corpse pieces are very profound. They are very intentional. And I love what Dr. C has done to bring these pieces together and to, for, for those that are, are maybe not religious, um, I don't necessarily identify as religious. And so for me to see kind of these other martyrs engaged with this repertoire makes a lot of sense for me. It's really moving to see both sides of that together. It's not an either or, it's an and. I'm really passionate about the repertoire this quarter for sure. I think it's one of my favorite quarters in terms of repertoire because of the music that we're singing, um, which goes back to this idea that the music we sing isn't just a, a piece of music that you hear once and they're like, that was nice and move on. It, it really, there's such an emotional connection in music and that's really showing up for me this quarter. Something that's just like so inherently like emotional, like Chikon Alam, is just like built in with like these words that are like written, that were like scrawled into a wall. But you can't like hear that and not be in an immediate different place while singing that song. I remember the first time we sang it, I was like, oh, this is just a song. This is just nothing. And then we talked about it. We talked about what that meant. And we like heard a recording of a choir singing it and um, it just all hits. It reminds us again, no matter where you are in the world, there are these stories that need to be told. As we're reaching toward what looks like justice, as we're reaching toward compassion, as we're reaching toward equality, these stories are profoundly important for us to tell. Specifically, again, through music, it touches in a way that's different. I think it lets people hear the story in a way that maybe they can take in more easily. We're not just trying to program the same stuff, right? Um, and what's really important about, for instance, this March 9th concert with Seven Last Words of the Unarmed or the American Dreamers that sets poetry of immigrants is that these are not composers imagining the words of underserved communities. These are people who have taken the actual words and stories of folks and tried to lift them up through music. And so that's where we're coming from and that's what we're trying to do. I'd definitely say if one, if they're looking for community, if they're looking for new people to connect with, this is definitely one of the right places to start. And two, if they're looking to build themselves up, work with a group with an excellent array of singers, and to make beautiful music, period, then that's definitely one of the reasons to go about. 
If there's a single bit of advice that I'd have to give them, it's just definitely come and bring yourself, put your best foot forward. This choir demands a lot, but it gives a lot in return. I have no regrets at all in joining this choir since the very first day I stepped foot on campus here at SU. This choir has brought all the joy, all the friends, all the family, and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Everyone is coming in with their, with their unique voice, talents, emotions to put it all into this one thing that you're all, you know, working on together and that's really special and so could not recommend that highly enough. And it's scary. It definitely is scary to come in and to sing and to put yourself out there like that. And again, do it, you know. I think life is about taking a step and doing something that feels scary and there's no better place to do it in the choir room where you've got so many people here who are gonna, who are gonna do it along with you. It's fun. It's a good time. Especially if you enjoy singing, if you enjoy sharing with people, if you have any experience of it in the past, even if you don't. It's been such a good way for me to share music with people. It's been such a good way for me to like build a community on campus. It's something that's so consistent years through. Meet people that aren't in your class, that aren't in your major, that aren't who you normally even associate yourself with in public. Singing's fun. It's like, like a straightforward like thought. Like it's just like something that I enjoy and something that I know a lot of other people enjoy. Everyone should sing. Everyone should have the experience of singing together with a group of people. This particular choir gives space to anybody who wants to sing which is also amazing because it's community members, it's faculty, it's students, it's alumni, it's anybody who wants to sing can sing. To experience that for yourself, to create music with other people is a gift that you can give yourself that there is nothing else like it in the world. If you think that you've never, you've never sung in a choir, you don't know if you could sing in a choir, yes you can, right? And you will find something about yourself as a singer that is completely different when you're creating music with other people than if you're singing by yourself or singing solo. Advice, be brave, do it, try it, see what it brings to your heart and to your life to sing with other people. It is a joy beyond what I can express. Yeah. <laughs>